everyone, welcome back to my vlog, my channel Gingerella. My name's Jen, welcome back to any previous subscribers and welcome to any new subscribers. So this is my vlog for my September makes, which is pretty, pretty late, but I've had a pretty busy September and October with a few different things, one of which was attempting to pass my driving test and I'm happy to say that yesterday I passed my driving test so yay it's amazing so hopefully back concentrating on dressmaking and whatnot although I shall be spending a bit of time looking for a car so that should be good whilst also spending a bit of time looking for a new machine. So thank you so much to everyone who watched and commented on the seamstress tag video it was so much fun to do and to get chatting to everyone about the questions and the answers and also watching everyone else's videos. There were a couple of things I just wanted to clarify. One was I did tag two people in particular but really the tag is open to absolutely everyone and anyone so if you haven't already taken part you still can. There's no time limit or time frame by which you have to do it so if you haven't done it yet then I nominate you. The other is I definitely have had several mishaps and embarrassing makes and fails and things like that. They've been learning curves, definitely. For some reason I conveniently forgot all of them when I was making the video, but please don't think that everything I make is perfect because it really isn't. And even the stuff I do make that I'm quite happy with definitely isn't perfect. I just don't show you all the close-ups. So yeah, those were a couple of things I just wanted to clarify. Before I show you my first make, I'll just tell you very quickly what I'm wearing. So this is a By Hand London Kim bodice with a half circle skirt on the bottom in some tartan fabric, which I got from a shop in Bristol, but you, you can get this sort of tartan in various places. So I spent a lot of time on pattern matching and matching along the princess seams. There are princess seams down here, um, which hopefully aren't too obvious. Okay, so let's get on to my first make. I'll just get changed and I'll be okay. So my first make this month is Butterick B6129 and I made version A, um, which hopefully you should be able to, to see. So I made a version of this red one. So I finished this at the beginning of September, but actually I'd started making it about six months previously. And I was going to a dinner party and I really wanted a new dress, of course, doesn't everybody? Uh, but I wanted it to be really, really quick, so I pulled this out of my UFO drawer and really all it needed was for me to sort the skirt out, insert the zip and, and really just finish everything off. So I went with this and I'm really happy with it. Um, the original length was somewhere in between my shin and I really didn't like that length and it took me ages to, to decide on an appropriate length. It has pockets, which is brilliant, and I think they're pretty hidden actually, you can't see them very much. I had to take quite a lot out of the, the centre back seam. Um, I had looked at the finished measurements, but there still was a, quite a lot of ease in it. There's still quite a lot of ease in here as well, but actually that, that helps with movement and things like that. Um, I love the sleeve detail, so um, the <laughs> The off the shoulder look actually restricts me from showing you. This is not the bra I would normally wear it with, by the way, but um, just for the purposes of this video, it has to be quick changing. So it features pleats here, um, which was actually really fun to do and put together. And I think it's a really nice effect on the sleeves. There's two bust starts here, which I think is, again, is a really nice feature rather than just the one. And I think that looks really nice. Um, the bodice is lined. These are some knife pleats here. Uh, taking some out of the centre back seam means that the, the side seam, it's, it's a little bit further back than one would like. Um, the lining keeps poking out a little bit because I haven't attached it down here yet, which is really bad, really naughty. I will do it at some point. And also I was a bit lazy with the hem and didn't really finish that properly. So I won't show you that. I really love this off the shoulder look. It's just a shame I'm not gonna have lots of opportunities to wear it. It's a really nice pattern, I definitely recommend it. So yeah, right, on to the next make. So my second make this month is the Colette Rue dress, uh, which I imagine most of you will have seen on social media. And I made version one, so this top one with 
um, box pleats and little sleeves. Killer actually got in touch with me to ask me if I wanted to sew a copy of the pattern and give them some feedback. I didn't have to blog the make or share it or anything like that, but I do blog m my makes anyway, so I did decide to blog that. But really they were mostly interested in the feedback of the pattern. So I made it in this light blue hearts chambray from Fabric Land. There's three box pleats at the front and I think two at the back. Yeah. There's pockets, it's fully lined. Um, I lined it just with cotton lawn. Um, and the main feature is this, these bust lines that come up here and then little pleats that come out of the bust. Um, it was a really nice pattern to sew. I really enjoyed sewing it. The thing that I was a bit unsure about was the cut of the bodice. The way that it was designed is that the bust lines do go over the bust, basically. I decided to go with the finished measurements, which meant that it really would sit across my bust. If I'd gone with the body measurements, then it probably would have sat underneath, but there would have been a lot of fabric everywhere. I could have done a full bust adjustment, but in truth, I'm just lazy. So I didn't do that. I'd seen a few different versions online. On the Colette blog, Sore had done a full bust adjustment on a tartan version that she'd made, and it meant it sat under the bust, but there wasn't lots of fabric everywhere. So I was a bit confused about exactly what the fit should be, and I just decided to go with this in the end. And my feedback to Colette was, if this is the style that you're going to go with, then you probably need to just assist people a little bit with exactly where those seam lines should sit or where you intend them to sit or if people don't want them to sit there what they can do to move them I mean for me I particularly liked and I would have opted for the fit of that tartan dress to have the seam line run underneath what's now happened since they've actually decided to change the pattern to have these seam lines sit underneath the bust but I really really like it actually it's really comfortable um, I love the pockets, I love that it's fully lined, I love the little cap sleeves. I really like sewing collect patterns because they always teach you something new. There are lots of things that I learnt through sewing this pattern. The finished makes always end up with a really professional finish, so I do really like that. The size that I made is a size zero after cutting and sewing a toile and everything fit okay, with one exception which was I pinched about an inch out of the, the neckline. The main reason for that was there was a lot of fabric here, it was a bit gapy and it was quite wide. In hindsight I think it could have actually been a bit wider and that might have been a bit more of a feature but um, it fits very well this way. And the other adjustment that I made was to shorten the skirt by two inches um, at the, the length and shorten line. The only thing that I don't like about it is just this fabric has a very loose weave along some of the seam lines where there's a bit more stress on the seam lines. So at the very bottom of this V, there's a lot of pulling at the seams and it's it's a bit unsightly for me. Um, it's not. I don't think it's that obvious and I don't think you can really see it, but I can see it and so I don't really like that. There's not very much I can do about it now. I would be inclined to make it again, actually. Hey, okay, my third make for September, which is my absolute favourite, are my Closet Case Files Ginger Jeans, or what I'm going to term my Gingerellas, because I think that's appropriate. And oh my god, I love these. I'm so happy with how these turned out. Um, I think I'm just lucky that I didn't really have any fitting issues. I made View B, so the high-waisted version. I graded before I even cut the denim out. I went for a size eight at the hips to a size four in the waist area, which worked out pretty well. The only thing that I really probably shouldn't have done was to grade the fly. So really the fly I should have kept completely straight and just chosen a size and I think that would have been fine, but it's worked out okay. Um, I shortened the leg by, I think, a few inches. I don't know exactly. Um, without getting the pattern pieces out. I thought I'd written it down, but I think I wrote, I've written it in the wrong place, maybe on a different make in my project book. I went with the gold top stitching, um, with the exception of the button, which has a blue blue um, thread. And they were so fun to make, actually. Heather Lou of Closet Case Files has you 
sewing the fly and the pocket straight away so they come together really quickly. The denim was, was fine to work with apart from when it got a little bit bulky. My machine as I've said before doesn't really like buttonholes very much so had a real problem with this buttonhole and I ended up just having to do it manually really rather than a one step buttonhole which is a bit annoying. For pockets, let me see if I can show you without flashing my underwear. Yeah, I went with just a, a spotty, a blue spotty, which is from Adam Ross Fabrics. For the overlocking, I went with a nice yellow overlocking thread just to make it a bit more interesting um, on the inside. The rivets were really fun to apply. I used the bottom of a frying pan and just hammered them in, so that was good. In terms of the pocket position, Heather Lou has you baste everything together and then sort the pockets out basically last. And whilst I sewed a size four in the waist and eight in the hips, the position of the pockets was for the size eight, that was the most appropriate. I love them, they're so comfortable. The fabric is some stretch denim from Fabricland, which was five pounds a meter. It has about 5% elastin in it. The fabric is really, really good actually. I wasn't expecting amazing things, but I thought it'd be okay for the first pair, but actually they've stayed really, really well. I actually haven't washed them yet and I've worn them a few times. They've only, you know, gone a little bit looser here but really I've just worn them in and they're nowhere near as tight as when I first tried them on. I thought actually, oh, I've sewn the wrong size when I first tried them on. I really love the way, I think it's mainly with view B. Basically, you have a little inbuilt spank situation going on in that the pocket stays and everything are all attached into the fly. So it really keeps everything tight and together here. The probably my proudest make so far. Love them. Definitely going to make loads more. Tell you one little secret though, I actually haven't finished the hem just because I'm always going to top them up and I've seen people wearing un jeans with unfinished hems as a fashion thing. I'm also considering the named patterns Jamie jeans and also the Deer and Doe Saffron pants or jeans. Okay, last but by no means least is my fourth September make. So this is New Look K6123 um, and I made, well, I, I sort of made a hybrid of view, B, view A and view B. So I made the wrap bodice of view, view A and B. I used the sleeves from view B and the skirt from view B or D. I used some viscose jersey from So Essential in the UK. I think I quite like it. Let's put this belt on. But it definitely was a mismatch of fabric to pattern. The pattern calls for matte jersey, which I don't know exactly what that is, as I said to you before, but something quite soft. And really, it's just not really designed for a jersey fabric, I don't think, or certainly without, you know, changing the pattern quite a bit. So I sewed a size eight. The pattern has, has a vent in the back, which I took out. I took the zip out of the back and just put that on the fold. I did keep the darts and, and the gathering here at the side of the bodice and the side of the skirt. I did keep that in. The pattern is designed to be faced. I considered lining the whole bodice, but actually what I did in the end was just made um, a neck band all the way around, which I used. I used a tutorial from Kashmir Ed, so I'll post a link down below because you could use that for anything. I quite like it. It's quite grown up, but I think the fit is a little bit off and it's the fabric is beautiful i love it but it's just not right for this pattern i don't think the wrap works quite well it, it does cover your modesty you can wrap it over a little bit more if you want or a little bit less um but it, it wraps quite well i really like the pattern and i think i would make it again i might not make this skirt this skirt doesn't necessarily i don't feel it does a lot for me i just need to hem it i'm not sure on the length i don't know whether i want to come up a little bit and make it above the knee or leave it down there and have it just below the knee i cannot stress enough the fabric is lovely and lovely to sew with the pattern i really rate it's just that together it didn't work quite so well i think it could look quite nice with maybe a lime green 
cardigan or a mustard cardigan or something but I, I think I probably will make the wrap dress again I'm not deterred I will make a wrap dress and it will work out whilst I was cutting this out I had just enough to cut out an Agnes tops I still had the yellow overlocking thread on from when I made the gingers so the inside is uh, is overlocked with yellow thread so that's quite fun so those are all my makes for September not a bad month really this one went over a little bit into October but that's okay that usually always happens I haven't sewn very much in October just because of the driving stuff that's been going on I really love chatting to you all so thank you so much for your comments thank you so much for watching see you next time bye